Misty, welcome to the cave. Thank you thanks for joining for me today. Having me. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just before we went out of the air, I'd say you're very excited today. I know I am. I'm excited every day, though. I feel like I don't have a lot of complaints. You know, I think that comes from being Canadian, maybe. <laughs> there you go. Well, I'm from Massachusetts, and it's getting really <laughs> cold the next two days here. Yeah. Well, there you go. So. Maybe a little more frigid on your end. Right, right. So, uh, you know, exci- like I said, exciting times. You know, we just recently had uh, your latest project, The Ark, premiered uh, last night yeah. um, on Sci-Fi and, of course, Peacock Network. Uh, it's a great series so far from what I've seen so far. I watched the first two episodes. Uh, how does it feel to be a part of this? It's like, it's crazy. I still am like, you know, I found out 24 hours before I was like on a plane. And then three days later, I was shooting the pilot. So it's all felt very like, like a whirlwind. And so Mm. I'm still kind of like, did that happen? Like what? And then I'm like watching live TV and there's my face. Like I just never in a million years thought that would happen. So it definitely feels like a dream come true. I'm like every day I'm like pinching myself being like, did that, was I on a spaceship? Like, did that happen? Um, and I know my co-stars are feeling the same way too. They're all really excited about the show and can't wait for like fans to see where it goes. Cause I think it just keeps getting better and better. Mm-hmm. We're going to jump uh, a little bit more into it in a few minutes too. Like you mentioned Canada, you're from Canada and everything. Uh, I want to know like what, acting bug how did it hit you oh man I think I always like my parents always tell these stories of like always knowing I was going to be an actor just like being like a very dramatic kid like one time my parents like I like accidentally fell and like for two weeks straight I like pretended my arm was broken even though it wasn't Mm. and like was just so committed to that (laughs) lifestyle of having a broken arm um so they always are like of course I mean my dad uh is from New Zealand and immigrated to Canada to be with my mom and got his first job in the movie industry. And so he builds sets for movies and TV still to mm-hmm. this day. And I think it kind of came from there, just this love of that they had for film and TV that then was kind of placed on me. And yeah, I think honestly, like I always tell the like Titanic story, like I saw Titanic when I was seven and I just from there was like, I want to be an actor, but like didn't know that that's what it was called until like Mm. years and years and years later. So I guess that's where the bug comes from. I don't know. It's so hard to like be like, where's my, where did this happen? You know, how did I get here? Because one day you could be like, oh, I want to do this, but. The next day you're back to like, you want to act again. The big question now is you said, you said your dad built the sets. How long did it take before he built you a little set to play with? Oh, he never built me any set to play with. I know. Come on. I know. I know. And my dad actually is known for building like incredible spaceships. He worked on 2012 and he also did like his first job was Outer Limits with Jonathan Glasner, which was like really, when I saw his name come up on the audition, I was like, ah this is so full circle um but yeah my dad's like worked on so many incredible shows building so many incredible spaceships like Mm. I'm like where was mine as a five-year-old I wanted to be in space you know missed opportunity did he ever take you on set so you can see things too yeah my dad worked on this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie called Sixth Day okay you ever see that and he built the helicopters out of like styrofoam with a group of guys and so he brought us on set me and my sister to see um see it and I just remember being like this is crazy like this is a helicopter but it's not real there's just something really like cool about that did that make you fall more in love with acting seeing all that with your father doing this kind of stuff yeah I think so I think you know like it just that that mystery and that like movie magic of like you know we're going to create a spaceship out of like styrofoam and have all these like lights but like when you capture it on camera it's going to look better like there was something about the make believe and the magic and mystique behind it all that was always so exciting and then i have always been like an avid movie goer and movie watcher and tv watcher i'm i'm a huge like film aficionado so I think throughout my entire life, I've been obsessed with film and storytelling through that medium. So I think it always kind of, like I was always gonna be an actor, but also like, yeah, of course, it's like exciting being on set and seeing that stuff. Right. As I'm sure like if you came to the ARC and saw right. our huge set and stuff, you would be like, this is insane that you guys do this with like 
this set, you know? What uh, You mentioned all this film and everything. Is there somebody that you looked up to in the industry that you try to like study after, like watch their films over and over? Oh man. Yeah. I definitely am somebody who I gravitate more towards like directors and cinematographers okay. as opposed to actors. I don't know why. I don't know why. Um, but yeah, I mean like Denis Villeneuve, I think is just like revolutionary. Yeah. I think his, his films are so incredible and um, Mike White and what he's done with White Lotus, I think is really incredible. And he was amazing on Survivor. Yeah. So like <laughs> I got a root for him. Right. Um, but as far as actors go, I don't know. I think like, take your pick on anyone that's like in theaters right now they're all doing so incredible you know they're yeah. all so incredible study any of them really right i know and you mentioned like the directors and the writers too it's like you know if it wasn't for them you wouldn't be here today either totally and i also think too like acting is like only like the, the tiniest even though it's the one that we focus on the most as like media goes mm. it's like the tiniest part you know, an editing, an editor can completely change a performance. A director, if you don't trust them, can really like cause you to like not give your best performance. It's such a collaborative medium, which is my favorite thing about it. But it really is like acting is just like the like light switch in a house. You know what I mean? Like right, right. that's that's it. You know. Um. So, what are you binging these days? I was, I was supposed to ask you this question. They wanted me to oh. ask you what's what's the one thing you've been watching these days. Oh, Last of Us, I think is just, you know, it's shot in Calgary. I, I worked on the show called Billy the Kid in Calgary and like yeah. the crew, the crews in Calgary are just like unmatched. I think, you know, and I, I love shows that are filmed in Canada. Like I just get excited uh, and it's an incredible show. Like mm. it's so good. Um, What else am I binging? Oh, I binged this Amazon series called Rogue Heroes about okay. the, the like, it's about it's the same guys that did Peaky Blinders and it's about the um, the birth of the SSA in World War II, I want to say. And it's like, it's really good. It's six yeah. episodes and I'm just like, this is, it's so good. And I didn't know a lot of that history. Just Yeah, it's, it's good. I actually had the cast on uh, when the, the show premiered. Oh, really? That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, they were great guys. It was, it's an, it's an amazing, it's a true story. So if you like actually, yeah. like, it's uh, what they went through was, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's, there's not a, like, there's not a flat line in it. It's like, it's so good. I loved it. So yeah, let's jump into uh, your latest project out of the arc, uh, sci-fi. How does it feel to be part, uh, doing sci-fi? Wild. I think Vancouver, I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I think Vancouver has so much sci-fi here. And it's always been the thing that I've like never booked. So I always thought like, oh, I'll never be on sci-fi. I'll never book like a space show. Mm. that's okay I'll go be you know the crackhead or the prostitute <laughs> or whatever um but yeah I mean one it's like the like legend of sci-fi and sci-fi channel is so incredible so I just feel really lucky to be a part of what they do you know mm. and they have the best fans right right so I bet you this show premiered last night too what's been like the feedback so far from fans family friends Oh, people are people. Everyone just keeps like messaging me, being like that speech. <laughs> How long did it take you to memorize I, all that? that oh, speech. I know. There's a lot of lines in this show. Um, that was the first thing I ever memorized. So, thank goodness, you know, I didn't have much time going into the pilot to like really, you know, memorize a lot of lines. Um, but yeah, that was the first thing I ever, like, even, like, the first audition, like, that was the first thing I ever memorized, so I, it didn't take long, um, but, yeah, what is, everyone just keeps messaging me being, like, what a speech, um, which is cool, you know, yeah. it is a, a wonderfully written speech, so. How do you explain this show, like, how do you describe this show to people? Oh, I always say, you know, it's set in a hundred years in the future, Earth has, like, a ticking clock on it and um it's it's a fast pace filled with everything show about the unexpected having to become their own heroes mm. that's, that's what i say it. that's a good that's way to put I it say. that's a good way to put it yeah and it's something like, like that right and especially when you say you know 100 years in the future and earth is pretty much almost gone yeah yeah there's like a there's a ticking time bomb on earth which is you know interesting 
Yeah. And it's and because it's only a hundred years in the future, which I think is quite a unique aspect of our show. It's not like ten thousand years in the future. Right. The technology isn't as advanced as maybe we would think it to be, kind of thing. Yeah. But I will say a lot of the technology we use in the show, um, which you'll see more of as the season goes on, is all based in like real articles and real like scientific discovery. I know um, Jonathan Glasner texted me, me the other day and being like, we like this thing that I can't really talk about, but he was like, it exists, it's working. Like they found it to like, actually like then it was just a hypothesis when we started yeah. filming and now it's like an actual thing. Wow. Which is crazy. That's awesome. So we see you yeah. as Lieutenant Lieutenant Sharon. Um, how do you, uh, first of all, tell us about your audition. How were you approached for this? I want to hear about this. Um, I woke up on a random Tuesday, had this weird audition from, you know, the other side of the the world. Um, I didn't know the casting director and I didn't, you know, it was just really random. Me and my agent both were like, what is this? Mm. And she was like, read the pilot and tell me like what you want to think. And so I read it and I just thought like, whoa, this scares me and is so crazy. And I don't even know where I would start. Like, it was just kind of like checked all the sci-fi boxes, but also I was like very intimidated. Um, and then, yeah, I sent a tape and then they asked to like do a callback. I did a callback and got to meet Dean and Jonathan did that. And then, um, and then I didn't hear anything for like a month or two months. And then it was kind of looking like it wasn't, you know, I wasn't going to get the part. And so I kind of was like, okay, I'm not going to get the part. Like, great. You know, moving on to the next wonderful project. Um, and I was skiing and I got a phone call and they were like, You booked it, like get off the mountain. You have to get on a plane tomorrow night. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Oh my god, that's awesome. I was, I was like, What? Yeah. Aren't those the best jobs when you like they tell you we need you on set two days from now? Or yeah, even twenty four yeah. hours. Yeah, you're the captain of the ship, but like, right. you'll figure it out. Yeah. And go <laughs> to Serbia. Like, I didn't even know where Serbia was, you know, naively. And yeah, it was just like, it was crazy. But kind of honestly, exactly like Garnett's storyline in the show. She's like thrusted onto the ship. Nobody really knows her. And she just yeah. has to like, she just has to do it. She's in charge. She gets thrown into that. She just it's, and she doesn't and she doesn't want to be in charge. Yeah, she just knows tell. like she's the best option, you know. I think too, like I've been thinking a lot about leadership and like the pieces that like like are taken out of you when you're a leader is like it, it's not an easy job. It's a heavy, burdensome job, and you're not the you're not the most liked. Do you know what I mean? Because you're oh, yeah. always having to think of like all the consequences of your actions and the and like if I do this and this is gonna happen and okay and that now we have this problem. So it's it's uh I just I I don't know if I ever want to be a leader like for real, like do right. Garnett's job. Like it's <laughs> it's heavy. Plus people depend on you on a spaceship. Depend on you to have answers. <laughs> and it's right. like I've never been to space, you know? <laughs> None of these guys have. And they're like, well, what should we do? And it's like, right. uh, I don't know. But that's why you need like an Angus and an Alicia on your ship. Because right. then you're like, well, these young kids will tell us what to do. How 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 would you describe uh, Sharon? And uh, what was the biggest challenge playing this character? I would describe her as like someone who is extremely determined. Oftentimes acts before she thinks mm. and then later on is thinking about was that the right move it was really important to me that she wasn't a saint always that we like see her fail and also I think too she's someone who constantly is thinking I'm failing I'm failing I'm failing I'm failing but I'm going to keep going yeah because I have because they have no other option um yeah and I think she's extremely empathetic and sees the best in people always yeah. Um, and the hardest thing about playing her, she's very quiet and I'm the opposite of that. She holds her cards really close and I'm like, you know exactly what I think when I'm thinking it, I'm very like ah, in your face. Mm -hmm. So I think that was, those were the hardest things, like how to like keep reserved and quiet and still be hopefully interesting. Yeah. I kind of noticed yeah. it with your character, like when like when other cast members are like talking to you, like take a second before you answer them. Mm. Like, that, like that pause. Yeah. 
Well, she's thinking of the best. I think she's thinking yeah. of the best, the best answer or the best scenario. Right. And how do I diplomatically answer this? Because I mm. think, especially when it comes to Lane, she just wants to punch the guy in the face. You know, <laughs> she's like, oh, my God, yeah. can you just work with me here, dude? But she can't do that. Right. So. What, yeah. uh, like, um, how do you prepare to play like a role like like to be in space, pretty much in a spaceship? Like, uh, well, did you, you go through like Jeff? a trade? Did you go through a training or anything else for this? Oh, you just call Jeff Bezos and you go to space. You know, you it's that easy <laughs> these days. I wish. Oh man, I wish. I would love to go to space. Um, honestly, I don't know. I think you just slowly start. You know, you start researching. You start. You start somewhere, and then you just mm. keep, that kind of piles on. I also got to do a lot of my own stunts. So there was a lot of like stunt right. rehearsals. And I found like through doing these crazy stunts that um, I really found her like in my body. Like she's someone who's very active and wants to be in the mud. Um, but yeah, I think you just, you just do it. You know, you just start the research and the preparation and it kind of leads you somewhere. Yeah. Hopefully. Were you, were you asked to do your own stunts? Cause I've had a guest on where they're like, they want to do their stunts, but they won't let them uh they they didn't force me but they were okay. like you can do them so like why not have you do them and I was like okay mm. and they were fun and all the stunt guys over there are amazing and taught me how to do like the craziest things right. which I didn't even know I could do I was like what the like a superman punch where you like fly in the air and like you jump in the air and you punch like yeah I was like what the heck <laughs> how long did it take you to make that up to the, the way you wanted it well well, it you know, I didn't get to see any playback because I was so in like the let's do it again thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited for those scenes, like the fighting scenes. Um, but yeah, it took like they would teach us for like two hours. We would rehearse it a bunch. You go home and rehearse it. Mm. And then uh, and then you do the thing. That's what's so great about, you know, TV is like, like and especially shooting digital. You can always just do it again. That's awesome. That's you know? Awesome. Yeah. How, how many uh, episodes are we expecting the first season? There's going to be 12 episodes and I, yeah, I reading them as like a cast member, like yeah. did not expect like the scripts to go the way they did. Like every script I was like, what? So I may, I'm really excited for people. I think you, you might think, you know what the show is. And then the, the further you get in, you're like, oh, whoa. Okay. And then you make up your mind and then you get the next episode and you're like, whoa, I have no idea. I have no idea. What's uh what's your favorite episode that we you can't wait to air out of the twelve, you think? Oh if you man. Can, if you if you can remember. I, I love this season finale that Jonathan Glasner directed. I just okay. think it's like jam-packed. It's so interesting. And then there's some episodes like I wanna say like eight and nine are really great. Eleven has a good fight sequence in it that I'm like, we did a thing, you know? Yeah. we did a thing so 11 yeah you know as it it progresses i'm really excited episode four is like character like really character driven and i love and i love that you get to it reveals a lot about a lot of characters i don't know it's like it's so tough to pick you know your favorite mm, that's awesome now has there been uh um like how many episodes did you have to go before they decided they want to see another season or not have they ever said anything i i have I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, I feel like that's a great question for Dean Devlin. <laughs> there you go, there you go. <laughs> the boss. Ask the, the boss. boss. <laughs> that's right. So uh, now what's next for you now? I, I assume you filmed all 12 episodes. They're all, like, yeah. they're all done. Yeah, so what's so next filmed, for you now? We filmed all 12. I'm back home in Vancouver. Um, and I'm just skiing. I took up skiing a year ago. And so I'm just enjoying the luxury of like no longer having to like hustle that actor lifestyle mm. of like working three jobs, hoping somebody right. gives you one, you know? So I'm just taking a break ish, you know, I guess it all depends on who wants to hire me next. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Chrissy, uh, uh, let's end this by like a, how many listeners of the viewers can find you on social media to, to keep up with you with more news for the arc and hopefully more seasons. Uh, oh, you want me to say my Instagram handle or yeah. whatever? Yeah, I I am Christy Burke, and you can check me on Instagram at uh, at Christy M like the Michelle Burke. Um, I've been banned from Twitter apparently, so I don't have a Twitter. <laughs> I just have Instagram, yeah. guys. I, it seems like a lot of people are using more Instagram these days, anyways. 
Yeah. So I know I tried to join the Twitter lives last night and me and um, this guy named Patrick who works at Electric Entertainment, who um, were part of the making of the arc, um, tried for like four hours to like get me a Twitter. And he was just like, you're banned. You're banned. <laughs> Elon, Elon hates you. <laughs> oh man christy this was great i hopefully the yeah. listeners viewers enjoy this interview and hopefully they'll follow you on instagram so they keep up with the arc and future projects yeah thanks so thank, much thank you for